So how am I going to analyze how other people are outranking me? And this is where Linkscape really helps. Here are my tips for when you're trying to understand what a site is doing that's outranking you to reverse engineer what they're doing so that you can do it better. You want to find sites that are clearly inferior to your site. And this is one of those times where you got to check your ego. Just because they're outranking you and you don't like it doesn't mean they're naturally inferior. You really got to look at the site and go, oh my God, this thing was developed in front page. How the heck, you know? Like, it's, you got to try to find the, the, the hints or the, the ideas that will come to you that would say, this person's outranking me and really doesn't deserve it. You will learn more when you're trying to do search by looking at people who attain rankings and don't deserve it than you will by looking at big brands who do. Big brands rank well all the time. There's really not a whole lot you're going to do about, you can do about that. So you don't want to analyze Home Depot if one of the words you're targeting is hardwood flooring. They're Home Depot. People link to them all the time. They have millions of dollars in ad campaigns. If you can't replicate that, then what are you really going to learn from them? Probably not a whole lot. You also don't want to pick a site that's got the keywords in the domain already, unless you also have the keywords in the domain. Google has been overweighting keywords in the domain for a very long time, and they're continuing to do it. So if you're trying to figure out what you're going up against and you pick a site that's, that is laptops.com as your competitor to analyze what they're up to and what they're doing, you're pretty much going to fall flat on your face because Google's giving a ton of value to the fact that they own the domain laptops.com. And picking the wrong sites will totally render your, your, research, your research useless. And that's when you feel like you're failing in SEO. And that's when you feel like you've got to go back to the drawing board. So if you don't pick the right site to try to reverse engineer based on the last few tips, you're probably going to pick the wrong sites and you're probably not going to learn anything from this analysis. And again, you don't want to pick a major brand because you cannot replicate the ways they go about getting links or you can't replicate their massive ad budgets. So back to how I'm using Linkscape as a tool to help me compete in an area where I'm failing. One thing about, uh, about the link sheet that I can do is I can bring in all the anchor text for a competitor's link or for a competitor's site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in all of the links that they've got, but then I can add filters on top of those links. Is it an image link or a text-based link? Got to know the anchor text of that link. Because you know what? That's how you find out whether or not you're getting beat on anchor text. Maybe they've got a ton of comments that they paste all over the place on a tech crunch and whatnot that we all know are no followed. But if, if you will find people doing things like that, and sometimes it actually works in some industries. Obviously, there's Moz Trust and Moz Rank, which are Linkscape's versions of how to determine page rank and how to also determine domain authority. If somebody's consistently getting links that have the right anchor text from high authority sites, that should tell you something. They're probably doing link buys of some sort. And I'm not advocating that you go out and buy links. What I am advocating is that you do the things that will help you get onto the first page if your competitors are already doing them, okay? In my opinion, the beauty of Linkscape is that you get to manipulate this stuff in Excel. That is critical when you're doing high amounts of research on people that are outranking you because then you can start to see trends. For us, the trend that popped up was that every one of this client's competitors was getting a ton of anchor text links in people's blog roles. And that's how they basically, that's how three of the top 10 sites were basically in the top spots while we were languishing down in the 18 to 25 area. So this is how you're going to figure out how your competitors are beating you. Are you getting beat on the fact that the Moz rank or the value of the links passed to your competitor sites tend to be higher? Maybe they are being mentioned in places where they're the only outbound link to a competitor. And the places where you're getting mentioned, you're getting mentioned in the top 10 list. What that means is that they're getting profiled as an individual site, and you're getting profiled along with 10 others, and that site's got a value of 10, they get a power of 10 pointing to their site, you get a power of 1, because Google will take the overall power of 10 and divide it by the 10 outbound links. Sometimes you're both getting links from the same location, yet depending on how many other links are on that page, your competitors might be getting more value out of that link than you are. Obviously, you can then look at no followed links, which I talked about, authority, age, and then potentially raw number of links. So the greatest findings that I had were that authority links do not always pass juice. You really need to understand when you get a great link from a site, not like a Wikipedia, but from like a magazine or a really big important site, they can chop up their URLs, they can chop up using Ajax to make a nice interface to their article. They might chop an article up into five parts. All of those things can severely diminish the value of that link pointing to your site. 
The other thing we found is that getting links from O Magazine means nothing if it doesn't have the exact anchor text. When we did our analysis in Linkscape, it became painfully obvious that we were getting beat on anchor text links. It wasn't just authority, it was actually everyone was kicking our butts because they were able to get that keyword mentioned every time they went out. And what they would do is they'd find 15 bloggers that they could kind of negotiate that anchor text. Well, our client and us, we were working on getting them mentioned in really big magazines, and we got beat. So, and this is the exact number. What we basically figured out is that the one link from the New York Times was not even close to being as valued as finding 15 or so mid-level bloggers who would, give a, who would give them anchor text and put the link on their homepage. We spent so much time trying to work with the editors of the New York Times and begging them and all that, get the link, get the link, get the link, and we got it and nothing happened. And then we did the same thing with Shape Magazine and we did the same thing with Cosmo and we did the same thing with Women's Day and all these magazines and none of them helped us increase our rankings. Contrary to the fact that everybody says authority links are the way to go, you have to understand where those authority links are being placed. And sometimes you're better off working with 15 lower or middle level bloggers than to try to spend all your time going after one big victory. So we had to create a new, strat a new link strategy. It's a very tough lesson to learn.